If I could have your attention, it's 530, so we're going to call the meeting to order. And the first item of uh, business, I guess you would call it, is Ms. Barbara Ward Wins is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our mission statement tonight will be read by Butch Oliver. Burbank County Schools will provide quality educational programs and services to ensure student <coughs> academic and vocational success. Okay, thank you. Do we have any, anyone sign up for public comment? Okay, we'll move right past that. And on your computer, you'll see that it's the approval of the agenda. Is there any additions or changes anyone needs on that? Okay, if not, I'll entertain a motion. Move approval. So Okay, got a motion and a second. second. I'm sorry. Okay, that's good. I heard you. A motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Everybody opposed? Okay, we have an agenda. Uh, board minutes are attached. And hopefully you've had a chance to look over those for the April 11th meeting. I'm going to recuse myself because I'm over here. Okay. I'm going to do the same, but I won't with Butch, okay? <laughs> uh, it was okay I was elsewhere. Okay. Move approval. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Any questions about these minutes? If not, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed to those? Okay. That carries us into the recognition portion of our meeting, and that will be handled tonight by Mr. Mac Hodges. And mm -hmm. I think I saw Ashley. Yeah, Ashley. there she is over to the right. Oh, good. 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 I don't need them. Come on, come on. All right, Mac. Feel happy. Hey, good evening. This good is evening. always <laughs> such an exciting part, character education. Um, and for the month of April, um, good judgment was a character education trait. And um, we do would like to thank Scoops for sponsoring this month. So for elementary school, we had um, nominated from Bath Elementary, Sophie Berry, Chuck Winnity Middle for the elementary for fifth grade, Sarah Tucker. Chocolate Primary, Chase Smith, Eastern Elementary, Jaden Winley, John Cotton Taylor, Sincere Hopkins, John Small, Montserrat Chavez, Northeast Elementary, Christopher Alonzo Burgess, and for SW Snowden, Ashton Kirwan. And the winner is from John Cotton Taylor this month. Sincere Hopkins. And if Sincere can come forward, please. Sincere's not here this time. We just got a phone with his mother. She's on the way. Okay. Do you want me to just read this later? We'll read this later. Change the order. So, okay. Okay. All right. That's easy. Okay. So now for middle school. For Bath Elementary, the winner was Karen Milan Milandano. I'm just going to get that one wrong. Chakra Middle School. Ryan Livengood, Northeast Elementary, Brittany Bell, P.S. Jones, Betty Hickey, and S.W. Snowden, Omaron Smith. And the winner is Brittany Bell from Northeast Elementary. And, and Brittany Bell was nominated by Penny Modlin, her teacher. I don't think she was able to get here, but her principal is here. And um, is Brittany, are your parents here? Okay. Daphne and Vernon Bell, if y'all would stand. Miss okay. okay. Modlin had the final thing to say about Miss Brittany Bell. Good judgment is a trait that will take you very far in life. Brittany Bell has exhibited this in a very visible manner. One day, Brittany lost her homework. And while many of her peers may choose to play the blame game or simply to take a zero, not, blip, not Brittany. Brittany took the initiative and actually traced independently the puzzle on another sheet of paper. She copied the questions over and completed her homework independently. She even added a note accepting responsibility for losing her homework and asking if I would accept her hand-copied version. Her good judgment shows a dedication to excellence and a willingness to go the extra mile to be the best student possible. 
I am proud to nominate Brittany Bell for the character trait of good judgment. Thank you, Brittany. Congratulations, Brittany. Congratulations. Great job. Way to go, Brittany. Where were you when I needed to turn it? Back to the future. Easter has passed. That's me. And for the high school, the nominees are Northside High School, Ashley Cullum, Washington High School, Monique Jones, Southside High School, John Bryant. And the winner for good judgment for the high school is Northside High School's Ashley Cullum. Parents Scott and Daphne Cullum. I don't know, Miss Daphne. Miss Cullum is here. If you would stand up. And it was presented um, by Melissa Boyd, was her teacher, and of course, who's right back over there? There she is, and Mr. Clark, principal's here also. I would like to nominate Ashley Cullum for this month character education quality of good judgment. Today, it seems harder and harder for students to choose to display acts of good judgment, but I believe Ashley does so time and time again. Good judgment does not come naturally to all people. Most often, good judgment must be learned through example, and that can come from many sources. Parents, friends, church family, and especially peers are all sources for a young person to learn what they should do and should not be doing in life. Too often it seems that young people just do what feels good without giving much, if any, thought to how it would affect them later in life. Ashley has shown me time and again that she makes decisions not based solely on what feels good, but what truly is good. Then the quote is, the true test of a man's character is what he does when no one is watching. I watch Ashley both during and outside of class. Even when she thinks I'm not, and I'm impressed by the fine young lady she is becoming. She's polite and kind to everyone she meets. Often, even in the face of others teasing her, she would just turn to them with a smile and go about her business. Other young people might attempt to make their attackers feel as bad as they might have been making them feel. Ashley steals their thunder by not allowing them to see. You can't live a perfect day until you do something for someone who will never be able to repay you. Ashley recently applied for a summer internship program at a local hospital, a position I've been told she's filled before. Most kids, if they, they pursue a job, want to be doing something exciting where they get to interact with a lot of people that are fun. They don't plan on filling their summers their only real time off with tedious workload of eight hours of school day to work with a sick, elderly, and needy. Ashley really impressed me with her drive to take on such a task. I've no doubt that she will do wonderfully at this for no other reason than the people she interacts with will have their day brightened by her smile. And it is amazing how much can be accomplished if no one cares who gets the credit. These sayings and so many others I believe truly fit who Ashley Colum is a young woman. Ashley isn't a saint. She's like a lot of other young people in many areas. And this topic of good judgment doesn't cover. But I believe she's a fine example of what we are here at Northside. And I hope will be more of the norm for students today. A young person with the inner desire to succeed in life who takes the necessary steps to be successful and with inner joy and peace to make good decisions along the way. I hope that Ashley is just as proud of herself as I am to have known her. So Ashley, thank you very much. Congratulations again. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what's in these baskets, but that's a <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Okay. Yeah, we get sure. Well, okay. and we're still waiting for Sincere. I think she's on the way. So okay. Oh, we, we can just wait a few minutes. Can here. you wait? Okay. Is that okay? Uh, that'd be Are fine. you okay waiting a little while? We'll allow Sincere to come up as soon as uh, they're here. I'd like to ask uh, another member of our audience and one of our students, Nathaniel Bowen, to come up. Nathaniel. Nathaniel's parents are Stacy and Chris Bowen, and I think grandparents may be here as well. We'd like you just to stand up and be recognized. <clears throat> We'd like to congratulate Northside High School senior Nathaniel Bowen for being appointed to the United States Air Force Academy. I want to share a little bit, you all know what a prestigious honor that is, but yes. at the U.S. Air Force Academy, we have a rigorous academic program which balances science, technology, engineering, and math with arts and the humanities. The robust core curriculum places cadets at the intersection of these disciplines, generating opportunities to cultivate and apply creative and complex problem-solving abilities. This challenging yet rewarding academic program continues to garner national recognition, offering 27 majors and four minors, unique research opportunities, and a variety of postgraduate scholarships. Faculty and staff are dedicated to developing cadets as officers and scholars, stoking intellectual curiosity and a commitment to lifelong learning. This academic program is woven into the broader fabric of the academy and its programs in character and leadership development, athletics, and armsmanship. Academy graduates are well equipped with the knowledge and critical thinking skills necessary to serve the Air Force and the nation as leaders of character. We can't tell you how proud we are that you're accepted into a, a distinguished program like that. And just want to say congratulations. Thanks. to welcome Sincere Hopkins from John Cotton Taylor, our character Ed Winner, um, up to the front, please. And Sincere's mom is Latina Hopkins, and she's in the back, standing up. And um, Sincere's um, teacher was Holly Patrick, who's also in the back. Okay. Okay. So, we're, yeah. okay. <laughs> so Ms. Patrick wrote the following. At the beginning of the year, I had to have a few meetings with Sincere to discuss behavior. He knew I wanted him to do his very best, but he was having a very hard time rising to the occasion. As time progressed, I started to notice changes. He had all his homework. He came in and got right to work. He pulled out his library book and he wanted to read. I asked him, what's going on? And he told me, I want to do good and I want to make you happy. My heart just melted. For a student to look at you and tell you that they want to make you happy is one of the best feelings in the world because when they are willing to say that to you, you know they love and respect you. His good judgment has shown day in and day out lately. He is choosing good friends to play with who encourage him to do his best and he does the same for them. He is choosing to do his very best in the classroom by always working hard and completing all of his work. He is choosing to be the very best he can he has passed over 60 accelerated reading tests, passed our last two math tests, and for the first time this year has made the AB honor roll. His good judgments have made him a success. Good job, young man. 
keep up the good work. We'll see you here again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Congratulations to you. Mm -hmm. Good job. Keep the attitude. Congratulations. This basket is about as big as you are. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a little token for the winners of the all right, and now we'd like to get all three of our character ed winners back up if, with their certificates so we can get a picture. Let me take the picture. I made the basket next. Oh, you can put the picture. He wants to hold it. <laughs> Just see that. Yeah, let me tell you what. Let's put it right here. Good idea, man. Mm hmm. Why don't you change it? He must have broke the last He's been around. He all said. We have some camera difficulties with the Daniels picture, so we're going to take that again. We did break it. We did break it. Don't you put that picture in the bus garage while I had a problem with that. We all the way out the door. We did. Okay, this time I'd like to ask Ms. Daphne Cullum to come to the podium. And Ms. Cullum is a teacher, advisor, coach associated with the 2017 Northside High School Science Olympiad team. And they're here tonight because they are regional winners, uh, which is the best finish in school history with extremely tough competition. So I'd like to ask her to come up and introduce each member of the team. They'll come up. We'd like to have them go through and, and uh, greet the board. And then we want to get a group, a group picture of them if they would. When I call your name, if you'd please come up. Susanna Van Geisen. Christine Taylor. Nathaniel Bowen. Cody Jefferson. Rachel Lang. Aaliyah Brin. Elise Brin, Ashley Cullum, Jessica Foster, Amelia Woolard, Samantha Warren, Matthew Cullum, Dylan Cook, <coughs> And Max Gertz. I'm trying to make sure I. Have to. Um, missing tonight from our group are Lauren Brinson, uh, Daisy and Nancy Soto, Chandler Nimmons, Katie Hopkins, Aaron Taylor, Michaela Martin, Amanda Brescia, Haley Welch, Brandon Cooper Coggins, Ari Torlitas, Alex DeLeo, and Tyler Kirk. Some of those members are part of our JV team, but they work together uh, to support one another. But our varsity team was the team that took first place at the regional tournament this year. And this group of young people I spent Friday and Saturday with at NC State University competing in the State Science Olympiad Tournament. Congratulations. <laughs> 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 
I think it's outstanding that we can celebrate athletic and academic uh, championships. We're very proud of you all. And finally, I'd like to ask Mr. Sean White to come up. Sean is the athletic director at Southside High School, and we've asked him to come up tonight because he's been named the Regional Athletic Director of the Year for Region 1, and we want to say great job and congratulations. statement. Right uh, I'm thinking about Mr. Clark with all the, I think he had a trifecta tonight with all the uh, representation from Northside. And I think, uh, no, I was thinking of you, but I think we also need to think about all the administrators, all the parents, all the teachers, siblings, everything that goes into making this county what it is as far as education is concerned. We should be proud of ourselves as a, as a whole, as a village. So I'd like to just everybody give each other an applause for And that's pretty evident by look at the number of people that always turn out. That's why we enjoy this part of the meeting. <laughs> Plus, the next part of the meeting is not usually as enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> so at this time, we generally will take a few minutes to break in case you came just for the recognition portion. And this is when we generally clear the room out. But, but we want you to know you're welcome to stay for the business part of the meeting. It might not be as, as exciting, but it's important. But now's a good time if you would like to, to exit. And we do appreciate you coming and supporting, well, your kids, grandkids, and the students. And we thank you for all you do. We really do. So we'll take a few minutes break right now. Oh, oh. Um, it's a few minutes. Yeah, a few minutes that we take versus what they put into it means I mean it's nothing. Thank you, Ms. Cole. Thank you. And good luck to you guys. That is a good job, bro. Go Panthers. And I'm going to take care of that. Just like any of my shakes or whatever they need. I'll trade my shake for his anytime. Thank you. 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 Thank Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. That's, yeah, that's actually, awesome. I didn't see you anyway. So I, know, I know you all. I wondered about that. 
Yeah. That's, a, that's a pretty good group of seniors there. What they're talking about, that little. I think we're, we're a little biased, but it's a, it's a good group. Yeah. Hey, look, look at all the square feet of stairs. It's amazing. Is that where it's not that big? No, no, not some of them. We didn't completely clear the air. We didn't completely clear the air. Yeah. Is that it? Okay, that's going to take us now into the no action portion of the meeting. And the first item up is an update from Higher Heights. And I believe tonight Dr. Moeller and Loretta Everson is here with us. So it's all yours. And welcome. Thank you. Good evening. It's oh. <laughs> amazing how it clears out. Uh, my name is <laughs> my name is Dr. Christy Moeller, and I am the uh, board chair for Higher Heights. I have been the board chair for about a year now, and um, currently I am the interim program coordinator also for higher heights um, we had to replace our program coordinator after Christmas and since I wasn't working and have the qualifications um, I'm filling in until we can find somebody who is qualified and capable of filling the position um, before I go any further I would just really want to say to the school board and to the school system um, thank you so much for your support um, we have just been incredibly blessed by the support that the school system has provided to our program this year in particular um, and uh, particularly Miss Lisa Duke who has been on one of our committees helping us with one of our fun fundraisers and it's just been such an amazing help um, so I just wanted to thank you again and again and again <laughs> for your help um, I told you as an update uh, I am the interim coordinator right now we are wanting to have time to be able to find somebody who would fill our, our program coordinator position well and um, we are working on that <laughs> and, and um, but in the meantime I've been meeting with kids with our girls we work with um, for those of you who don't know we work with parenting pregnant and parenting teenagers our whole goal is to keep them in school and our second goal is to prevent a secondary pregnancy while they're in school um, so that they can finish school it's hard enough with one kid but you add it if you were to add another one it would be even yeah. even harder and right. so our goal is to keep the kids in school um, currently we are serving we have served about 25 students this year that doesn't include babies that only includes <laughs> the kids um, and we have had since December 25th we've had seven births so some of those students are students from programs from last you know who are who are parenting they've been parenting they had a baby last year and they're still part of the program now so um, we don't have 25 new babies this year <laughs> um, the other thing that we are doing right now as far as out, um, <coughs> updates go we are prepping for our pig picking of the year of the cause pig picking for a cause which is our big fundraiser of the year uh, we are using this money that we will be raising for our budget as well as we're beginning work on our maternity home we have a house that um, the city is leasing us or the county is leasing us and it, but it needs a lot of renovation we also have a lot of work to do as far as setting up our program once the maternity home is set up and running we will be one of the well, actually I think we'll be the only maternity home in eastern North Carolina if you need to go to a maternity home right now you have to go to Charlotte or I want to say Durham Chapel Hill I mean <laughs> Chapel Hill sorry Chapel Hill or um, Charlotte yeah as far as I know it's Chapel Hill Durham some that you know that far west uh, in the state <laughs> and the other thing that will be unique about our maternity home is that a lot of maternity homes you're allowed to go have your baby and then you have to leave but you're a teen parent you're a brand new mom you have a brand new baby you're trying to stay in school and now you have to find a place to live and support yourself so with our program being the goal of getting through school 
graduating, hopefully going on to college, our goal is to they'll go come to us, have their baby, and they'll come back to us because until they're finished with school, if that's what they need to do. So the big the pig picking this year has even more significance for us because we are working to raise our budget has to be come higher. You know, we have to raise quite a bit more money this year uh, in order to do the renovations as well as prepare our program, licensure, accreditation, staff, you know, all that stuff. So, so our pig picking is May 12th. It is a Friday night. It starts at 6. It goes until 10. We will have a DJ. Um, this DJ is involved with a shagging group, and so there will be dancing. It will be at Mitch St. Clair's ranch. He has been so gracious to allow us to use that. This is our third year doing this and um we're going to have a silent auction a live auction and a cake auction and food is being catered there will be a pig you know it's a pig picking so there will be an actual pig <coughs> and uh cost is 20 dollars per, per per person or 35 per couple so if you would like to get a ticket lisa duke has tickets uh renee mccoy also here at central administration has tickets over in building four i think it is and my um, work number and my email address is on here too so uh let me pass these out to you guys <laughs> feel free to post a, a flyer and i think that's about it as far as updates you know we're really working hard on getting started on our maternity home and um, which is why again this year this this fundraiser in particular is very important for us to be able to um fulfill our budget for next year our program budget and then also <coughs> keep going go. what? Go oh we have a oh yeah we've got tons here help yourself um our goal is to sell 350 tickets so we have a few more weeks to do that and i have tickets here tonight if you need tickets um we'll take a check or cash <laughs> so uh any questions any questions for me? No, thank you. What I, I know all the hard work that goes into it, and and I applaud everyone's efforts. That's part of it. And I've I've attended your banquets and the and the pig picking and mm -hmm. and support the program. And it's currently uh, we have a new board member. It's currently housed at the Ed Tech Center. Yes, um, Terry. So that that's where it is. I, I don't know um, in what building, but it's currently we're in building housed. two, right across from Mr. Jackson's office. Okay, and um. He's been a, he he and Mrs. Green have both been very very helpful. Well, everybody actually. I take uh, the the sheriff guy here in the office is the resource uh, officer for the school, and he comes through and greets me every day. And so it's just been a wonderful place to be is at Edutech. Well, I thank you. I know the importance of those girls finishing school and, and uh, getting their mm. diplomas. Any other comments? If not, okay. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. that's going to take us into an action portion of the meeting and John Cotton Taylor I, yep there he is Mr. Mitchell I believe has something he'd like to share with us I do I'm coming tonight just to um, seek permission to place a freestanding 8 by 10 storage shed on our campus mm -hmm. um, it's going to be stored inside the track area um, I have a picture of the shed right. as well of as well as where we're going to place this okay, shed? We've, we've okay. got it on our screen here. Um, Boy, so it's it's a 10 by 10 cement slab that's already existing. Mm -hmm. uh, Lowe's has been uh, generous enough not to donate, but we've they've reduced the price for us so we can uh, buy it. Our PTA actually purchased us for our PE program, and uh, so I've already talked to Mr. Hudson. He's agreeing that he'll actually place the the uh, structure down so it's secure. And I'm just coming here to, uh, just to seek permission to place that on our campus. Okay stand is, is everything covered any yes, issues sir. that we need to know about everything there okay okay what's the board's vote? Move approval. Second. second absolutely all right thank you so all in favor say aye aye thank you for well, coming thank you yeah it's on the high part of the track uh, the other side of the track does flood some but this is on the high spot um this afternoon i actually went out and looked and from the rain last night the other side is totally flooded, but this side is totally dry, so okay. we'll be good with that. If it was going to show up, it would have done it. It would have definitely done yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> so you won't be seeing it. I don't Absolutely. imagine. Let's hope not, anyway. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Appreciate it. Capital budget update. <clears throat> um, I believe that would be you, Mr. Hudson. Good afternoon. Is it something new you're passing? No, it, you should have it posted. I know you. Oh, okay, yeah. It's, yeah. I'm looking, you want to look over the Easter break projects first? Yes, sir. Okay. We had a very, very busy Easter break while everybody was out of school. That's just one copy. That's just a paper copy that thing yeah. got started. It's, it's, it's on the computer. It's still on your computer. It's the first document. Okay. Hand those back. Okay. We're looking at the Easter break. Yes, sir. We were able to spread the love. We covered quite a few projects um, during the week while we were out. Um, I'll actually run over them right quick, if y'all don't mind. The Chakwandi Primary, we did complete the, or has completed the um, front door access, um, part of our um, security lockdown for the schools. Eastern Elementary, we did install their new commercial siding glass at the front door. Um, really, really made their um, front entry look very professional and nice and secure. Um, East Carolina Communication is currently um, working tonight as we speak, trying to finish up the installation of the new intercom system. And they're having to do a dual thing. They're keeping the old one in works while they're installing the new one. So as they take out one, they make one live on the new system. But both of them will talk together at, at this moment. Um, SW Snowden, uh, we had two classrooms that we put took the two before ceiling tile and grid out and put two by two ceiling tile back in where we had a lot of moisture problems and insulation above that was replaced. Um, very, very, very nice ceilings. The teachers said they loved the two rooms um, down there. Um, also at SW Snowden, we uh, applied the fl epoxy floor finish to the gym lobby, canteen, coach's office, and a restroom. Um, made a great um, change in the appearance of it. Um, building four here at this campus, we installed a new sewer system um, for building four um, to fix the problems we had there. And we started on our renovation of the male and female restrooms here in central office. And that will still be ongoing for the next couple of weeks. Um, Washington High School, they installed 16 of the new cameras, 360 degree radius cameras throughout the school system, through the school campus. John Cotton Taylor, um, our staff replaced four of the old board units. Um, so that completes the two and a half tons um, installed at that campus. Um, we still have quite a few more of the other ones, so as summer break, we'll get those. Um, technology server room, that unit failed, and it was nice that we had one on hand. So we just took one out of our stock and replaced it the same day because that room has to stay conditioned at all time to keep our servers up and going. Well, that's school system-wide. Um, Chakawandi Primary, we hope we have found the reason for the high water. We've looked for it for the past year and we've had a section of concrete that would not dry up and upon digging that piece up and digging down about three and a half foot, we found a hole in the main water line, um, just gushing water. So that has been repaired temporarily. We want to dig up about 20 foot of it and replace that section of the pipe, but we got to do that one afternoon when school's closed. We didn't have time during our um, Easter break. And another note that's not on there, we have started um, with the approval of Mr. Willie Mack, we have started the cooling tower stuff, getting the PO and stuff set up for the U.S. Communities um, Project. That stuff was all approved. Mr. Willie Mack did a research, and we are proceeding with that, getting the POs and stuff for that, for that cooling tower replacement. Okay. Yeah, I, was out at, no, I was out at CPS today. They were digging that up, and I would say you should see it dry now, but after yesterday, I don't think <laughs> it's going to look dry. But I think that was the problem. Yes. Uh, just go ahead. No, go ahead. Go yes, ma'am. We've been looking for it. We knew we had water usage because we could sit out there at night when the school was closed and we could sit find water. We checked all the toilets. We checked all the sinks. You know, we did mass things over, over different breaks and we could not find it. And just one of the custodians just happened to note to us that there's a piece of concrete here hadn't been dry in the last three or four weeks. It's wet. So <laughs> when we dug down, it's part of the old water main for the 1947 building. It went into what was the boiler room where the principal's office is now used to be the boiler room that area was built up and offices built there in that space so but i hope that helps our water problems there I, so i would think so 
Uh, I'm just going to comment on the system wide, the 300,000 for the cameras. Uh, can you work with Russ to get us a balance of what's used, what's not? Because that just carries over from month to month, which I know there's not 300,000 sitting there. I already know that. But how much has been used is what I need to find out. Does anyone have any other questions for Stan? And the second attachment is basically the same thing that we just went over, just a detailed. Yeah, actually, the second attachment, I should have said that. The second attachment is the one I'm looking at. I printed a copy for right. it. Right. Um, does anybody have any questions for him? Thank you, Stan. Is Stan yes, ma'am. Are you finished? Yes, ma'am. Oh, well, yes, I do. Okay, well, you go ahead, because I, I got some, too. Okay. You go first. Okay. <laughs> I, um, I was by uh, Ed Tech today. Are you, are you aware of the ceiling fell in? No, ma'am. Where was it at? Had to, in, in, the, in the media center. Not it aware. It fell in, fell on the, the computers, got wet. The, the, I mean, the, the, whole, the ceiling is in the trash can, and the buckets are sitting there with the water in them. Did they not think they to call? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't know. Got a roof leak. Got a roof leak. Right. I, know. Might have been I will there. follow up with it just as soon as I get out of here. Roof leak. It's when about, there? I was there today about, mm -hmm. uh, about 11, 30, 12 o'clock. I had stopped by Stan to look at the the work that had been done. In the cafeteria. In the cafeteria. I think the doors are great, really look good. Um, kind of concerned about that. That yes, you're going that to is. do something with that, that uh, ramp, right? You're going to seal it or something? That's We're going to put an epoxy anti-slip on inside of it, yes, okay. ma'am. We brush finished the outside, so it's not a problem. It makes all the ADA requirements. So, okay. but appearance-wise, we're going to do something on the inside to make it look nicer. Okay, and on yes. that around that is, will it be some kind of safety mark or something so that you know it looked like? As I watched the kids when they was going in and out the door, it's a stumbling block. You know, they're stumbling, and I don't know if they're not looking where they're going. It's got to be that, yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. So if and, and it's I think it's, but yeah, it's uh, it's different for them. I know it's a different thing. So I didn't know that. You know, sometimes they have like the the, the maybe a yellow paint around the edges of. We it can or caution like it, yes, ma'am. And you did tell me that you have ordered tile for that. We're going right? to epoxy it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Because the tile will make it too slippery. If somebody I comes mean, in with wet that, shoes. That's broken around. Yes, ma'am. They're supposed to be that, fixing that. Right? Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay. It looks good. The other thing is. Um, the with the the community help that we're getting um uh don did we did you say we would be getting a we would be willing to have some will it some community help to do some painting or something sure mm -hmm. okay they're asking to get those those benches and those pot pairs in between the media center and the the building the office yes ma'am they could get those painted Okay. okay. Yeah, we've been using community service workers that they come in. I only currently have two that's available to us at this time. Mm -hmm. So that's the only two that we have. Which I thought we would have more, but I told them I would take all that we could get. Okay, so if that, I don't know if it's what, what's going to happen. We had yes, a big rain will. today, but we need to try to do something about that water coming in on those I agree. Beauties. I know that. We'll get on. Yeah. Okay. The only one I was going to ask you about, I know we've already talked, but just you had to refresh my memory. I got lots of notes and I see lots of these. Yes, sir. Was that on and back down at north side again over the rider, bus rider out to the, you know, well, actually out to the buses? And I know we discussed the width of it. Where did we leave that at? Where, I mean, it's over, artists, it was over our budget and amount. It needs to come right, back before right. y'all for approval to it, whether to roll it over to this coming year or to make it the width. But we cannot go as wide as some of the board members wanted the total width from what the engineer says it can't go that far without a lot of structural steel. Okay. So, but I can, I'll, I'll present that back to yeah, you next time. because we, we found There's actually the three of them, John Cotton Taylor, um, Eastern Elementary and Northside, all three of them coming in right. over they're, budget. I wasn't gonna ask you, but yeah, they're on here, the one for John Cotton Taylor's I <coughs> too. Um, because I looked over, well, I don't have to look over because we just finished the 2017-18 budget and we didn't roll it over. So we're gonna have to figure out what to do with well, it. Well, it would take some it. additional funding. I to, you know. I, I get it. Uh, the only other thing I was gonna mention to you, and I'd mentioned to you earlier, but on the board to hear it too. We're in the, I believe we're in the first year of a two years uh, custodial services contract. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and you and I know that there's been some issues. I'm, I'm gonna call them issues. Can you check a couple of things for me on that? Yes, One, sir. make sure that we are, I, I know we are, but where are we at in the first year of our two year contract? 
What are our options if going forward we have the same issues that we're currently having? And what recommend you might want to get with Don and y'all discuss and bring us a recommendation on what you think we ought how we ought to proceed. Because if we're where I think we're at, about halfway the first less than halfway. Is that right? Less than halfway the first year of the contract? Correct. I don't know that I want to continue for eighteen months like what I'm hearing about right now. So you want to talk about that with them? I mean, Don, and then just come back to yes, the sir. board. Yes, sir. Just any issues on for the board to know the schools when they make their supply list of what they need each month. Well, that's not what they get. They get. Well, Stan can tell you more. Why am they I talking? They get what the company wants to send them. Then the custodians know how many trash bags it takes, how many dust mops it takes. They've done it for years, and the company's cutting them as short. We run out of paper towels and toilet papers Eastern before the Easter break. We had to go scavenge from other schools. Just the quality of merchandise, they've changed trash bags three times since we've had them trying to get a trash bag that will hold liquids at our elementary school level so that they don't have to wash the trash cans every single day because when the can liner leaks, then they've got to wash the trash cans. They're putting more work on our custodial staff. So, have you had just, correspondence with them? Yes, ma'am. We've and, had multiple. And what's their, what's their reply? They keep trying to improve, but they just haven't given us a good quality product in a lot of the areas. They've changed products, but we still haven't got a quality product. Are you talking to the same person, or are you yes, going up the pecking order? Well, there's only two. It's, it's all the yeah. way at the top of the pecking order. Yeah. And, and the, for Stan's, for the benefit, Stan has copied me on the emails. So what he's saying, not that I would doubt him, but what he's saying is true because I've been copied on everything. And it's always been, well, an, an excuse. Is but there is there a clause for us to withdraw yes. if yes, we're not yes. satisfied? Yes. Yeah. 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 Is this the company out of Lumberton? No. Or Chapel Hill? Chapel Hill. Or Hillsboro. Hill. Well, well Chapel. okay. All right. But I, I was by some schools and I checked with the custodial head custodians that I knew for the long term and just to see, you know, what they thought. <clears throat> and it was like, they said it was like Christmas every month when they get their order, what might be in it versus what they thought was going to be in it. So they don't tell them they're going to change the <laughs> no. They must have had some changes. It just shows used up. To, they, those people used to get bragged on how good yeah. they were. I don't, I don't know. Well, <laughs> or have I, they? I think they under-budgeted their costs. They and they're the trying to make it every way they can. Yeah. Between, yes. And <clears throat> this week there was another issue I won't get into, but Stan covered that as well with them. And it was written in the RFP specifically to provide and yet they provided something different and Stan has questioned them why did you not follow the RFP <laughs> and the contract I don't think he's heard yet but just to let you know it's still ongoing as recent as this week yep so check in we'll see what our options are and what you might would recommend and and you and uh, Dr. Fitz can talk about it and just bring back to the board what you think yes sir it's a lot of money we need what we're what we're paying for right. Any other? Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Okay. Uh, community use of facilities. Real quick, was there no action okay, item yeah, for sure, this? No, there was no bids. It was brought in as one, but then there was nothing to be. Uh, no RFP came back in. Is that right, Stan? So there's no. You don't need a approval on anything. No, sir. No okay. approval. Yeah. It was going to be, but nothing. They didn't come back in. Okay. Uh, community use of facilities. Policy 5030 is here for second reading. And I just wanted to walk through that a little bit to give you uh, background on what we're looking at. And, and there's another companion document that goes along with this that we don't put as part of the policy. It is the rate schedule. And the reason for that is if it's part of the policy, anytime we make an adjustment to that, we have to come back for board approval. So uh, before this actually gets executed and we send it out, we're going to be updating that rate schedule and we'll bring it back for you to see uh, for your information. But if you scroll through that, a couple things that are, that are highlights that we're, that we're working to do. We want to make sure that we've got custodial and utility fees and in some areas you'll see that we've struck the word may and it says they will be charged just to make sure that we're getting uh, what we're uh, having to pay out for the use of those facilities and, and that varies depending on the, the kind of group that we're looking at. Also that we've increased the number of days uh, that we're asking for for the application process from, from 10 to 15 to give us a little bit more uh, time. We also have added an online form that can be used and the two biggest pieces that I want you to be aware of is we are no longer going to allow the kitchens to be used and the reason for that is the child nutrition that equipment that's in the kitchen has to be inspected there's wear and tear on that we, we're reliant on people cleaning it the way that our child nutrition folks would clean it 
but we are going to allow folks to use a serving line. So if they have a, a catered meal, they can come in and go through the cafeteria. The other part, if you look on page uh, four or five, uh, down near the middle of the page on damages and liability, and this is something I feel like we need to do to keep uh, me and other individuals out of a uh, could be a tenuous situation. It says that all user groups except school sponsor groups must furnish a certificate of insurance for general liability coverage with a total limit coverage of $1 million for each claim made. And then there's been a clause there that says alternately the superintendent or designee may require the group to execute a waiver of liability. I don't feel comfortable offering a waiver of liability and I think if, if anyone's going to use our facility they ought to have that insurance and if they don't have that insurance then they shouldn't have access to our facility for our very own protection. And you get into some sticky situations where you provide waivers for one group and you don't do it for another and I just prefer not to provide the waiver at all and say so if you want to use the facility you have that insurance and that's, that's part of it. So. What I'd like to ask for is your approval, and again, I'll come back to you when we get the rate uh, updates, and that will be use of facilities inside, outside, uh, the cost in terms of using a field with lights, all those types of things that a, that a group may be interested in. And this is the same one, second reading. It's already been in our hands for 30 days. So. Second. second. Okay, got a motion to second. second. Yeah. Any last questions about it? If not, all in favor, say aye. aye. Anybody opposed? <coughs> Thank you, Don. <coughs> Let's move over to the <clears throat> trustee appointment at the community college. We're, the trustee appointment, the position that uh, is up for reappointment uh, this time during the year is Ms. Betty Randolph. And uh, I know Ms. Elfa Booth has talked with her. I talked to Ms. Randolph today, and she is interested and, okay. and very uh, excited about the possibility of serving again. So I'd like to put her name up as a recommendation for us to have her as our representative uh, for, the, for the term that expires June 30th, 2017, to begin <coughs> the term again. Okay. Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay. Motion is second. Any discussion? Any others that you need to talk about? I take it not then. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed to Ms. Randolph? I don't think so. Absolutely not. I know. Thank you. A quick field trip review. We have four. I'd like to present these all at one time for you if that's okay. Sure. And they all, coincidentally, I think in some Okay, so they, they occur, their overnight trips, they occur the 28th and 29th of April. The first one is trip 10261 from Southside. It involves the Envirathon team going to Cedar Rock Park, Burlington, North Carolina for a state competition. You can see the number of students and the appropriate number of adult chaperones yep. carrying a minivan. And the way they're going to pull that off is we have a, one of the adults going to take a private vehicle, so okay. they'll be able to use a minivan. <clears throat> uh, trip 10255 is the uh, same trip for Northeast Elementary. They're going to be traveling by bus, traveling with Northside High School. And then 10, uh, trip, trip 10281 Bath Elementary to the Lego Robotics in Charlotte State Competition. They're going to be traveling with P.S. Jones. And P.S. Jones, because you have to enter these as separate trips, uh, is listed there uh, as trip 10285. Uh, these are trips because the students have earned the ability to go to a state level competition and we certainly look forward to that as we saw tonight there's great reward in our students uh, having that opportunity to compete at the state level so I'd like to ask for your approval on all four of these. Move approval. So uh, one quick question. Mm -hmm. um, the north side, will they be, have they already been approved or? We've done that earlier. I think. Okay. Yeah. As I said, it's, yeah, and, and this is the way I like to see them with the uh, chaperones. We actually have more adults than students on some of these trips, which generally we have a policy of one adult for so many 15, 12, students. Is it, is it 15? But here we have as many as six adults for four students. So that's, I think there's plenty of eyes to be upon them. So I like that. I think they're good. <laughs> yep. So we've got a motion second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed to that? Yeah, I think they're good, Mac, don't you? <laughs> I think they better behave. <laughs> Not that they wouldn't. Not that they would. But some parents need some supervision. Too. I well, <laughs> you're talking about life again. I may think that, but I won't going to say it. <laughs> um, that carries us to where we need to go into closed session for some personnel issues, right quick. I move that we go into closed session pursuant to General Statute 143-318.11A1 to prevent disclosure of confidential personnel files under General Statute 115C-321. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Go in closed session. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed to closed session? Then we're in.
Okay, we're back in open session, and the first order of business is to approve the personnel agenda for today's date that was just discussed. Move approval. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second on the personnel agenda. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed to what's on there? Okay, calendar update for April, May. Which we April, April, <laughs> April the 24th and 25th, which were yesterday and today. And then May the 2nd, May the 3rd, and May the 16th. The second is our work session, which is our uh, beginning of the month meeting. And then the 16th is the monthly meeting that we have. And then the third was what we had scheduled for our special call meeting with the commissioners. And what I'd like to ask is if we can meet uh, briefly on the 1st of May, just to do some settling up with, the, with our local uh, requests that we've got uh, based on some uh, action that's taking place in the General Assembly as we speak. We want to come back and give you an update and hopefully get some finality to that uh, before we have our meeting on the 3rd. Can we do um, that <clears throat> at 5 or 5.30? Whatever works for you. What works? Everybody go around the room. Uh, 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 I have a question. Sure. Can we have a motion to adjourn? Yes. Yeah. 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 Could we do could we do could we do the yeah. meetings Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday? Not well Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That Thursday is the Wednesday. transportation banquet. Yeah. That's, That's awesome. what I'm saying. You know, That's fine. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. The work uh, session on the second is going to be light. We've had so much work that we've done in the last. And Monday's of meeting won't take more than an hour at no, the most. No. So what do we time? Well, we, these folks drive in from work. Can we not do us. Monday and Tuesday at the same time? We're the same meeting. Don't well, if, if if we do Monday, I'd, I'd ask that we do it at five thirty. I have a four o'clock meeting uh, on okay. Tuesday here in town. I may be a little late for five o'clock, but. For the, our Tuesday meeting, okay. but I, I should be here. Shouldn't it, take me much more than an hour to wrap that meeting up. Five thirty mm -hmm. really works better for me. It doesn't okay. make me have to. Close the only it. thing with okay. doing them both is if you do them uh, Tuesday, that won't give them time to put the budget stuff together before. That's not what I'm saying, Wednesday. Terry. No, I'm saying, but some no, he was asking. Sorry. He was asking, and I'm hoping we can finish up Monday. Can we so do them both Monday? Ready on. Um, well. So Tuesday. You can. I won't be. I'll be here for the first hour, and then I'll be gone. Yeah. But, so yeah. Tuesday meeting. Let's, let's still good. Is like you as well. I was just making a suggestion. Oh, I hear you. But we want to accommodate when whatever we can. Okay. So Monday is gonna be five thirty. Tuesday gonna be five. Well, to be decided here. Oh. But uh, no more than an hour at the most. Okay. Is there any other way to do it? No, I mean, I don't know any other way to no, do it. No, and I hate that we're pushing this, but we, we, we've been wait, waiting on the General Assembly to take some action for yeah. us to get answers, and I feel like we're finally at that point. What about an 8 o'clock in the morning meeting, Monday? Well, these guys had a good oh, work. that's too no. hard. Yeah, okay. Yeah, You'd have to make it 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I got gotcha. you. Which I can make. <laughs> <laughs> so can I. <laughs> well, we all make it. I don't know if we'd be try, a, available I awake well, I, I'd be fine. Ahead. I just have to leave at 7.30 um, and go to well, work. Well, since we're having three in that week, 5.30 yeah, would work problem. better for those of us, right, Terry? Well, see, we've yeah, got three see, plus. we have two back to back, it would work better. Yeah, see, so we got three plus the thing on Thursday. Right. So you got four nights out. <laughs> So what is the pleasure of the board again? What's what's it sound like? It's five, five. five thirty Monday, five Tuesday, and twelve Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that's right. Yeah. I, know. I, I won't make twelve o'clock on Wednesday. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I, I can say it on camera because by the time they I'd hear love this. To be here. Why don't you talk to my my, my boss? By, by yeah. the time they hear this on They're TV, it'll have, already be over. Have, you won't miss anything. <laughs> uh, I'm for something else. Always. I tried. Okay. Today. Board member updates. Uh, I just want to let you know that mm -hmm. <clears throat> the the park is on go. The community park is on go. The city have just gave us the bathrooms. So they'll get ready to start that. That's going to be the first entity on the park. So that will go on. Hopefully they'll start doing that on um, next week. And that's, in, um, that's about where we are at this time. And um, Michelle has been a great help and, uh, with that. Uh, also, uh, she worked very hard to make sure that everything is in line coming from. I've spoken several times with Adam, who is the regional person for the KB Reynolds uh, Fund Foundation, 
So we would just want to let you know that it's moving. Okay. It's moving. Hopefully, we will be doing the dedication service on um, August the twi August the fifth. August the fifth, we will be doing the dedication service, and I do hope that some of the board members can be there since mm -hmm. we are so willingly dedica dedicated that fi that field over there for the park, and it looks like it's going to be a great adventure. And you'll keep us posted. Sure. Okay. Superintendent updates. HB 13 update. This was a class size reduction work. Uh, they started work last night. We had a conference call today at 8. And what we've been told is the compromise has been reached. It's working through the chambers. I'm not sure if it's completed yet. But as it's been presented, it pushes back the anticipated class size reduction to the year 1819. It gives us an extra year. It reduces the current class sizes by one, which will help us out greatly. We've got to get the final numbers for us to take a look at that. And what we're also told is that as we look into the 18-19 year, there'll be additional funding for what they call the enhancement teachers, which is art, music, PE, and world languages. So we help that, and we feel like that will help us as we move into that 18-19 school year to get that done. And then there's some other reporting uh, requirements. And the last thing I had, and I, I want to say this on behalf of our board as well, I want to thank uh, the Beaufort Community College President Barbara Pansy, who's going to be retiring uh, very soon for being a great partner with us on, on many different issues. Whether it was to brainstorm or create a new program or find solution to existing problems, she's always been receptive and willing to work with us. And I wanna thank her for her service to education and wish her the best in her next phase of life and just say thank you for being a good partner and, and helping us in the many ways that you have. Okay, yep. Anything else? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Got a motion to second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you.